Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. My name is Mavor. I'm here with Ben Kiriaku for the Victory Road World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato. This is the last day of week three, and this is the last of the uh, the um, the pool rounds here, the group rounds. So it's very exciting. A lot of really interesting, like final on the line matches today, Ben. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think every match except for one, I think, has some really interesting stuff going on between like. Who won? In some cases, how many games did they win, both match-wise and individual games? Uh, because we're going in some places past just the uh, match tiebreaker, which is super exciting. Like every single match matters, every single game that you win matters, um, and and that's where we get to. Especially uh, on Sunday, when a lot of matches have already happened during the week, it is those final last games that we have uh, bringing to the stage here today uh, that will make some of the biggest impacts and decide on which of these teams are going to be going forward and which ones are at the end of their tournament life. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of really great games that we've had over the past weekend and the past few weeks in general. So it's nice to see some really, you know, top of the line, like exactly the hard cutoff point for some of these teams. You know, some of them are really going to be clinging and hoping for whoever is playing today who's being shown for that win just to keep their dreams alive so the very first match today we have is between ireland and south africa and that is patrick donegan and dale schwickard and then we have mexico and bolivia we have from bolivia adrian oviedo and then from mexico abraham orta and then we have Guatemala and the Philippines. So we have Pablo Aldana and Rap Perez. We did just get that match in about five minutes ago. So none <laughs> of us know what's going to happen. We're very excited. And then we have Victor Larson and Won Suk Jung from South Korea and Sweden. And then we have Fevzi Oskan and Renzo Navarro. And that is a match I think we'll be getting uh, just at about the exact same amount of time as we have uh, between Pablo and Rap. So very exciting matches and a lot of really uh, on the line plays today for these players. Yeah, definitely. So without further ado, let's get into the action with Ireland versus uh, South Africa. And this is one of those matches, again, uh, you can see the group stage on your screen at the moment. Uh, one point to Ireland, uh, one, four points to Vietnam. And uh, if Ireland win uh, the match, obviously they're going to be going through. If South Africa win the match, then they're going to be going through overtaking Ireland with only one point so far. And of course, if they tie, Ireland goes through. So uh, already a very, very tight uh, sort of group stage there between uh, Ireland and South Africa here battling it out for that second place slot and going into the next stage of the tournament. So uh, let's move over to see how many games have been played so far. So we can see there it's three and two uh, at the moment with these two teams battling it out. Yeah, three to two for Ireland. So Ireland needs to win this last or this one match here. So if Patrick is able to win this match, that means they are guaranteed to go through. So South Africa really has to cling on to all of the rest of the matches. They can't afford to lose anything or else their dreams are uh, officially snuffed out here for the World Cup. So definitely a lot of pressure on both Patrick and Dale. So it's very interesting to see exactly what these guys are going to bring. Uh, South Africa has some really interesting teams. I immediately see that ho -Oh and the Drake mm. ult, and that's something that immediately jumps out at me because I don't think I've looked <laughs> at a single ho -Oh yet in C Series 10. So seeing the ho -Oh and the Drake ult and the Gothitelle and the Tyranitar, that whole team is that whole team's wild to me. I wonder exactly uh, what it does, like what its whole main purpose is. But a lot of really standard stuff here. Zacian, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Groudon, and Kyogre. So those are all things that we've seen a lot. Yeah, good mix of teams from both both sides. Uh, Ireland leading towards Calyrex Shadow Rider uh, with three different compositions, so that's quite interesting uh, to me. Is that you know they're clearly building towards uh, Pokemon that they think is strong, but each player is just tweaking it slightly to best match their own playstyle. I really like to see that sort of interaction there. Uh, of course, a couple of Kyogres. Uh, nice to see that that hasn't fallen. Uh, off the usage statistics and uh, yeah as you say babe would have been really nice to see that ho-ho in action with that drake assault uh, could have been a absolutely cracking match but uh, unfortunately not for today uh, we're going to be going now into the player profiles uh, see these players here patrick uh, donegan is a uh, playing for ireland he's played quite a bit in both the uh, european and uh, us uh, circuits 
Um, and of course, worldwide, top eight in the Prague Special Event, a Boston Open finalist, and top 32 in the Oceania International uh, Championships in 2019, uh, bringing a fairly standard-looking Kyoga team. Uh, he had that Kyoga Tornadus and Sarina uh, with Reggie Lecky just... Uh, quite staple Pokemon within that build, but finishing off with something a little bit more interesting, getting a little bit of a trick room mode going with a Indeedee stack attacker combination. Uh, it'd be quite interesting to see whether that plays a part depending on uh, which Pokemon his opponent has brought to the set. Yeah, this team definitely has those two modes. You know, Tailwind with Tornadus is something that we see pretty much every single time. It's more. Uh, it's one of those modes that allows your team to go very fast. If this Kyogre is Scarfed, that means it's going to go faster than a lot of Pokemon on the opponent's side of the field. Most yeah. Sashans as well typically don't run max speed, so a Scarf Kyogre allows it to outspeed that, plus a Calyrex Shadow Rider as well. Uh, the Serena is a Pokemon that has really great utility that I absolutely love in Series 10. Being able to stop Fake Outs, especially if you're not bringing your Trick Room mode with the Ndidi and that Psychic Sturge, so stopping uh, moves like Fake Out or any sort of priority damaging moves to your side of the field is really nice if you're not going for Trick Room and you're trying to remain fast. And then, of course, Regieleki is just such a powerhouse. It's definitely a glass cannon kind of Pokemon, but interested to see Patrick running a team like this. I have played it with Patrick in a bunch of local events. You know, he's run some events that I've been a part of, so interested to see exactly how he goes with this Series 10 team based on the ways that he was playing in Ultra Series. Yeah, definitely. And, of course, uh, we need to see what the... Uh, his South African opponent is going to be running. That's Dale. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. I was, he's, we've just definitely got Dale's good side here. Um, and hopefully he'll have his uh, best side uh, with us in uh, playing this match. Uh, South African national champion in 2018, uh, which is a great accolade to have. Uh, South Africa um, did have some quite stiff competition in a few of the uh, tournament national tournaments that it held over the years. Uh, especially with players uh, from Europe typically flocking uh, down there to uh, play another play another uh, tournament and get some uh, get some wins going there. So and some much needed championship points. Uh, he's bringing a Xerneas team uh, backed up by Incineroar, Rillaboom, Entei, Torkoal, and Indeedy. And this is a really interesting uh, sort of both composition. And also going to be quite an interesting matchup. We've seen you've got the Kyogre from Patrick's side of the field. Uh, you've got the Torkoal on Dale's side of the field. Uh, Patrick wants to set up that Trick Room maybe in the face of Xerneas and use that Stack Attacker to good uh, to to be most effective. But of course, you've got three Fire Type Pokemon on Dale's side that resist Gyro Balls, so Xerneas can be kept quite safe. And of course, uh, both players have that redirection opportunity in that indeedy so uh going into team preview here i think it's going to be it's going to be a tough tough fought match regardless of which side you're on and uh, both players have the tools to beat each other's teams but it's going to be who is able to get that weather control that kyogre is able to launch off water spouts at un uh, without being stopped into Free fire type Pokemon on Dale's side of the field. It's going to be pretty tough for him, but uh, Patrick's got to do that in the face of Sun and Xerneas. So uh, definitely a uh, a match that could swing either way. Yeah, and this is one of those times where I love Serena. And if this Tornadus has Rain Dance, that's going to be really useful for Patrick being able to reset the weather without bringing mm. his Kyogre in and making those mm. fire type attacks from the three Pokemon on Dale's side not as effective especially trying to stop you know if you have a stack attacker that isn't going to want to take something like an earth power either from some of these pokemon here dale though going to start with that rillaboom and that xernia so some great fake out pressure here if he's going for a geomancy indeedy stack attacker though means there's not going to be any worry for that fake out here this indeedy is going to be something that would possibly go for something like that trick room here i'm or that uh stack attacker so they can get that really powerful gyro ball off into that xernia so xernia is not going to be comfortable geomancing here especially if there is that fear of trick room even though there is no fake out protection either yeah definitely not you know you could you can play uh, one of two ways here definitely the option just to go for a gyro ball into the xerneas definitely going to be able to knock it out uh, indeedy blocking priority from uh, the fake out and also grassy glide which 
uh, you know, may have some impact in uh, certain situations where you want to maybe hit Grassy Glide onto Indeedee to knock it out before uh, one of your other Pokemon attacks, and uh, that could be quite influential in this game. Um, with the Indeedy being protected from something like that in a Trick Room. Uh, likelihood is really that we're going to see that Trick Room go up this turn because uh, Patrick's in such a, a strong position here. And, you know, even though Dale can bring in his Torkoal as he's just done, uh, it is slower than the Stack Attacker. So maybe under threat from something like a Rock Slide. Yeah, he does bring in that Torkoal from that Xerneas. Rillaboom goes for a knockoff here onto the Ndidi. He's mm. a really, really big amount of damage and knocks off that Citrus Berry, so the Ndidi's not going to be able to heal. An expanding force here, though, so there's not going to be any sort of Trick Room and is going to do a pretty good chunk of damage. Half to, um, sorry, half to that Torkoal, but then the Trick Room here from the Stack Attack. I am mixing up my Ndidi's, I believe. I apologize <laughs> here. Yes. Um, just, of course, one of those Pokemon with genders with separate movesets for each gender, so one of those things that if you're not paying attention, you can slip up. But that Trick Room is going to be great, especially knowing that Dale has that Xerneas on the back foot there, and it's not going to want to come in for the next several turns. Definitely not. And it, yeah, if this stack attack is able to knock out this Torkoal this turn, it's going to be pretty big. Uh, indeed, he going for a Protect, and stack, going, stack Attack are going for that Rock Slide uh, into both of these Pokemon. <laughs> oh! Torko living with a sliver and a critical hit on the Rillaboom doing a little bit more damage. Earth Power coming back into the stack attacker. Oh, it's going to be no. a knockout. Uh, and that is a great turn there for Dale uh, as Rillaboom goes for that knockoff. Uh, doesn't manage to pick up the knockout because of the Indeedy Protect. And now uh, we're sitting in Trick Room, but Patrick has uh, probably faster Pokemon in the back that I uh, don't much appreciate that Torko on the field. Yeah, definitely not appreciating that Torkoal. The rain here will be nice for Patrick, but it is not going to worry too much about that Earth Power. And neither of the Pokemon on Dale's side flinched, which was really unfortunate for Patrick because not getting that flinch, even getting that Torkoal down to that very tiny sliver of health there that it does have, meant that Patrick was able was had to lose that stack attack, which is his big Xerneas answer. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, in Trick Room, uh, Xerneas is possibly yeah depending on how these are trained and we did see the choice scarf item on the kyoga so in trick room it's actually giving dale the advantage here because uh Torkoal's kind of done its job maybe at earth power we'd be able to knock out that indeedy uh remove any redirection opportunity away from kyoga i uh, could just switch out and switch back in um as well and just bring the uh bring the sun back onto the field to further protect uh the Xerneas on Dale's side of the field while it sets up Geomancy in Trick Room and uh, gives Patrick a really hard time. Yeah, Kyogre actually swaps out here, bringing that Serena in. Earth Power, though, is going to be enough to knock out that Indeedee, so now Patrick is down two of his four Pokemon. Rillaboom goes for a drum beating here, which would have targeted into that Kyogre slot, so Serena's going to take that far more comfortably than that Kyogre would have. Uh, it does mm. actually also get a critical hit here, which is why it did so much damage, and of course lowers the speed on that Serena, which is great for being in Trick Room, but really doesn't help all that much when you're facing a Torkoal and another Rillaboom. And then Kyogre, of course, comes back in. Not going to be able to reset that weather anymore, more too so if that Torkoal swaps in and out it's just going to be the end of the sun or of the rain here for sun yeah and, and that uh, drum beating could have been quite significant on the Kyogre um, does help in Trick Room maybe brings the Kyogre faster than the Xerneas um, depending on how the Xerneas has been trained on Dale's side of the field but you know if you get a drum beating off and way out Trick Room which isn't going to take that long to leave the field now I think it's only got maybe one or two turns uh, the Xerneas would then be able to get the Geomancy off. Uh, really, like it looks to me uh, like the condition for Dale is either getting that Torkoal in the uh, sun with Xerneas or setting Xerneas up in front of uh, the Kyogre and, and getting some real damage off. Flamethrower from the Torkoal, though, does a little bit of damage to the Serena. The Serena does hit two out of three triple axles, which is enough to knock out that Rillaboom on Dale's side of the field. So we're able to at least get that Rillaboom off so it doesn't get something like another uh, drum beating off into this Kyogre. Scald is also enough to knock out the Torkoal here, so there isn't going to be any weather resetting, which is nice for Dale to know. And there also means that there is that, Ky um, that Xerneas in the back right now, which we know about. And then there's going to be one last Pokemon, which I don't remember if we've seen yet. I do not know if it's no. going to be revealed. And it, uh, is it is the Incineroar, uh, which yeah. is really rough with that Queenly Majesty and with the rain out on the field. Yeah, definitely. But we're still in Trick Room. Uh, we saw the Kyogre locking into Scald and not Water Spout. I think that's smart from Patrick, not wanting to 
uh, take you know a, a bunch of damage and then not really uh, do enough damage to uh, the Xerneas afterwards. Uh, that does though mean that uh, Dale is going to be free to maybe protect around a little bit, protect his Xerneas, uh, could give the Incineroar an opportunity to go for a Flare Blitz into that Sarina, uh, certainly while we've still got Trick Room on the field, um, and keep Xerneas a little bit more healthy. And of course, uh, Rain's been on the field for a few turns now. It could be that Rain, uh, we get to a point where Rain does leave the field and Xerneas feels a little bit more confident, but uh, I think Dale's got to uh, start trying to get his Geomancy up fairly quickly to uh, get himself into a great position in the game. Yeah, no Geomancy this turn, though. A Protect from that Xerneas, which does stop a Grassy Glide from the Serena. A Throat Chop here from the uh, Incineroar onto the Kyogre, so a really interesting move choice there. And then the Scald into that Incineroar does so much damage with that Rain, but Incineroar mm. does eat its Berry there. So that Incineroar will be hanging on for at least one more turn. Not able to get something like a Fake out here, though, but the Trick Room does end and the Mist disappears as well, so that won't really stop any sort of priority moves with that Queenly Majesty on the field. No, definitely not. And uh, yeah, as I said, lock, being locked into schools, you have to decide on which Pokemon uh, that you target down now. Uh, it could be that Xerneas feels pretty comfortable not to go for the Geomancy here. Uh, just knock out the uh, Sarina and then uh, attack again with Incineroar. But that Scald's doing a lot of damage to the Xerneas. Uh, it does pick up the burn and Xerneas does get a, a Moonblast and a Throat Chop alongside with that Incineroar into the Kyogre is enough to pick up the knockout here. Uh, so it is Serena versus the world. Yeah, Serena goes for that Grassy Glide into the Xerneas. Isn't enough to pick up that KO with that burn here. The burn, of course, going to do that little bit of extra damage, but the Xerneas is still free to hang on for one more turn. And the Serena is going to have to deal with something like maybe a Flare Blitz from this Incineroar, which is, you know, probably the last turn of rain here, if I'm not mistaken, based on my counting. So this last turn of rain, and then it'll, you know, it still can only take out one Pokemon at a time. The Serena doesn't know any double targeting moves. And the Xerneas here goes for that Moonblast, is, of course, the fastest thing on the field. The Serena, though, is knocked out no geomancy so that is going to be the end of the game for patrick and dale and dale is going to win with a really nice protection of that xerneas to the back of the, to the back of its party yeah that that talk of surviving in the mid game uh, early game really was absolutely influential in being able to uh, get to the end of the game for dale and use that xerneas uh, even if it only just launched a moonblast into kyoga uh, and that was all it needed to do um, that was still enough to uh, close out the game for Dale. And uh, Patrick, I think these two maybe go back to the drawing board a little bit and just figure out how to make sure that that stack attacker stays on the field. I mean, we saw the Rock Slide do just less than half damage after an expanding force to the Torkoal. And I think, you know, that was one of the better scenarios. Uh, Torkoal comes into an expanding force, takes a bunch of damage, and hey, now maybe it's in range of stack attacker and uh, it doesn't have to fear. Uh, so much what the Torkoal is going to do and uh, maybe that's not uh, depending depending on how that Torkoal is trained maybe not that's not as consistent as Patrick first thought so gonna have to make some maybe slightly different decisions um, in this match maybe go a little bit more of a faster mode uh, take that Kyogre try to get some water spouts off maybe uh, protect the Kyogre with that Serena uh, maybe launch a, a something like a triple axle into the Rillaboom early game and uh, come in late game with that Kyogre and start pressing the water spout button um, a bit later in the game and kind of forget the trick room, which kind of was going to do as much as it needed to do, but didn't quite end up uh, putting Patrick in the best of scenarios when he had that Scarf Kyogre in the back. Yeah, and that Torkoal surviving was absolutely huge though for Dale, especially with that hang on and no flinch from that rock slide. So that definitely turned the game. So I think uh, Patrick is going to have to be more mindful of taking care of that Torkoal early on, especially if it is something that, you know, is going to pretty comfortably sit and take something like a gyro ball as well, even in that slow terrain. But I do like the idea of possibly going faster here, having that Tornadus, having that prankster option as well, if you don't see the Indeedee on the opponent's side of the field. Incineroar and Torkoal here, so double fire... <laughs> for dale so getting that drought up in that sun and then tornadus kyogre so that means the weather will be the sun because the tornadus uh sorry because the uh torkoal is the slower of the two pokemon on the field so if this tornadus has rain dance it's going to be really nice yeah very nice indeed that, that rain dance being able to just 
cut away the sun, uh, bring the rain back onto the field, and uh, there's nothing really other than that Rillaboom on Dale's side of the field that wants to take something like a water spout. Uh, everything else, uh, because of his composition being triple fire, uh, Xerneas can take a water spout depending on how it's trained, but it doesn't like to because it just ends up on such low health and can't really take advantage of the geomancy boosts that it likes to do. So uh, we'll have to see if the uh, Tordidus can get a rain dance up. Uh, it could be that Patrick is pretty content, even in the sun against two fire type Pokemon, to just hit the water spout button. Hey, if you do 40%, 40-50% to uh, both of the Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field and restrict their switching options for later in the game, uh, it's still not a bad situation, and certainly Incineroar and Torkoal aren't the most threatening Pokemon uh, for Kyogre to face down. The Tornadus, though, switches out, bringing that Indeedee and maybe trying to stop something like a fake out here from this Incineroar with that Psychic mm. Surge going up onto the field in that Misty Terrain, blocking that priority move. The Incineroar does go for the fake out, though. It does not work because of that Psychic Terrain. The Water Spout from the Kyogre in the Sun is going to do a pretty good job. Is enough to knock that Torkoal out. Does just under half to that Incineroar. It was a critical hit, so that makes a lot more sense to me. I was wondering exactly what kind of item that Choice Scarf was really being, but that critical hit absolutely huge knocking that Torkoal out making the weather in Patrick's favor if he chooses to swap that Kyogre in and out and then Dale sends out the Rillaboom in its place so it is going to change the terrain to that grassy terrain and allow that grassy glide priority if he so needs it yeah and now this is a great position for Patrick to be in uh, Rillaboom comes onto the field sure but uh, you've got Indeedee there its expanding force won't be as effective as uh, if it was in psychic terrain not by a long way but Tornadus is in the back um, Stack Attacker, as we can see, is also in the back as well, and uh, both of those Pokémon don't fare too badly, uh, to say the least, against Rillaboom and Incineroar. Um, so, uh, Dale's got to be careful here. He needs to find a way now to get that Xerneas uh, set up, definitely, um, because that's the only way he's going to be able to uh, breach through that Kyogre and stop it just water spouting all over his team. Yeah, Kyogre actually swaps out for the Tornadus, though, which is going to take that Grassy Glide, and there was a Protect from the Indeedee as well, which is not going to take damage from this Throat Chop that we saw the Incineroar was carrying earlier for its Dark-type move, which would do an absolutely massive amount, but that Indeedee protecting is absolutely huge, and this will allow that Kyogre to come back in, possibly, and set the rain up later. Exactly, and, you know, you've got to be worried if you're Dale for uh, Hurricane coming out from that Tornadus. Uh, if the rain gets reset, maybe that's enough you know maybe you don't need the Kyogre for anything more than uh, the rain effect uh, that'll slow down Incineroar's damage output won't be able to do uh, flare blitz uh, won't be able to flare blitz so so well into Tornadus uh, Tornadus then gets access to a really powerful and fully accurate hurricane uh, that it can use to dispatch that uh, Rillaboom and here it is the rain's coming back onto the field and uh, yeah we'll see with this uh, Rillaboom uh, reacts or decides to take a little bit of damage here. Yeah, the grassy glide though into this Kyogre, an absolutely massive choice there. Not making worrying about that Kyogre coming in instead of the Indeedy, so mm. knocking that out of the field early. But there is this hurricane for this Rillaboom to contend with. It is not enough to knock it out, which may be uh, contending of how this Rillaboom is trained. There is a throat chop here from that uh, Incineroar onto the Tornadus as well. And then both of the Pokemon on Dale's side will get a little bit of recovery from that grassy terrain. So not getting the confusion and losing your Kyogre is a pretty big a pretty rough play for Patrick there. Yeah, uh, it, it, equally, you know, it's it's still okay. I mean, the Grassy Glide into Indeedee was kind of like a win-win situation here, uh, where if the Indeedee hits Follow Me, then a uh, combination of Grassy Glide and Throat Chop uh, will be enough to knock it out. Uh, in fact, it's probably better for Patrick that the Kyogre came in, got knocked out, and the Indeedee is still there, given what Pokemon uh, Patrick has uh, available to him because that hurricane is going to be doing loads uh stack attacker is definitely not going to fear uh anything from the incineral nor the rillaboom and uh, this tornadus is very very bulky and is able to last out against a lot of attacks that dale has to offer yeah, and it does fire a Hurricane here into the Incineroar, which does proc that berry for him. Rillaboom goes for that drum beating into that stack attack a slot here, and this will still do a pretty decent chunk of damage, probably just over a third there, and lowers the speed outside of Trick Room. Another throw chop here into the Tornadus isn't enough to knock it out, but stack attack it does get that Trick Room up, which is absolutely huge if this thing wants to start firing off things like rock slides or gyro balls later in this game. 
Yeah, Rock Slide would be really strong here. Um, and Drum Beating going into uh, the Stack Attacker may not make a difference for any of the particular Pokemon that we've got on the field, but could make that Gyro Ball just that little bit stronger uh, because its power is based on the speed interaction between Stack Attacker and whatever Pokemon that it's targeting. A Tornadus not feeling uh, particularly healthy at the moment, but probably okay. I mean, uh, a, a Gyro Ball is likely to knock out the Rillaboom from here, and if it's the Xerneas in the back, and then it'll definitely knock out the Xerneas on the switch in. So Dale's got to do a little bit of repositioning here. Uh, get an Intimidate maybe onto the stack attacker. Uh, reposition himself so he can just make sure that Xerneas has an opportunity to uh, do what it needs to do. Yeah, the Ndidi here comes in for that Tornadus. That is going to set up that Psychic Terrain once again and make it so that Expanding Force could be really powerful. A Gyro Ball here, like you said, with that drop speed is enough to knock that Rillaboom out. So that means there's going to be no more opportunities for Fake Out entirely, even if this terrain did change. And that Beast Boost here for the attack Ooh. from that Stack Attack as well. A Throat Chop from the Incinero onto the Ndidi isn't enough to get it knocked out. Just brings it down to just under half. Ndidi also eats that Citrus Berry that we saw it was holding earlier when it was knocked off by the Rillaboom and gain one so it is able to get a bunch of that health back and that means that if it is this Xerneas in the back for Dale which we can pretty comfortably assume that it is it's going to be in a really tough yeah. spot right it's got a lot of turns of trick room to get through it definitely does and uh you know protect gets uh, less likely to happen every time you do it of course stack attacker is going to be protected by that indeedy uh, it does have access to rock slide um, and we've already seen an attack boost so you know it's in a great position to just either knock out the Incineroar here or to uh, just keep gyro balling into the Xerneas until it gets knocked out. Uh, we still got the uh, Tornadus in the back and we saw that do uh, a fair chunk of damage to Incineroar and not enough to pick up the KO by any stretch but uh, alongside Stack Attacker uh, there's quite a lot of resources for that that, that that Incineroar would have to go through in order for uh, Dale to win. Indeedy goes for a follow me here. The Xerneas went for that protect, not wanting to take any damage from a Gyro Ball this turn. Stack Attack instead goes for that Rock Slide, which would hit both of these Pokemon. It does connect with that Incineroar. We know it's not the most accurate move, but it is enough to knock out the Incineroar here. We saw how much damage it did in the prior games, but having that Incineroar out of the way, getting another attack boost with this Beast Boost on the Stack Attack is absolutely huge because it's slower due to that drum beating, and now it's at plus two stages of attack. So if it is able to connect a Gyro Ball on the Xerneas, that doesn't get a double protect then he is going to be sitting pretty comfortably going into a game three definitely and you know looking at the health range that that stack attack is at even if the Xerneas did somehow manage to get a geomancy it would have to moonblast most likely in order to knock out the stack attacker but you can't do that if indeed he's on the field just hitting the follow me button so uh, yeah absolutely commanding position here for patrick and taking out the Xerneas with that gyro ball uh, definitely more than enough to knock it out and we are going into uh, the game three of this set with yeah i think a really well played set there by patrick yeah and that is a really huge game three right because we know that dale needs to win this game to keep south mm. africa's dreams alive so now for dale he's got to have to rethink exactly what his game plan is here you know i really like the adaptations for trick room but i do think that that really rough, rough break of losing that Torkoal really early on, your best Trick Room answer on that Xerneas team makes it very tough for him to move forward, especially unable to get something like those Earth Powers off onto that Stack Attacker. That is that main problem for Dale to be dealing mm. with. So that really important crit on that, um, on that Water Spout there was definitely a rough break. So we'll have to see exactly what he goes for. You know, I like the play. I like the Pokemon he's picking. It's just tough because you can't get fake out pressure with that Ndidi or that Serena hiding in the party for Patrick. No, exactly. It's really hard to get something like a Grassy Glide off as well onto the Kyogre. Uh, maybe if you win a little bit more effectively in the Weather War, uh, you can protect the Torkoal uh, a little bit more effectively. But it's, it's almost like this uh, cycle between these Pokemon, you know, the Ndidi or the Sarina stops the fake out. Uh, that stops the Torkoal from being able to position uh, really well, but uh, it, the Pokemon that Patrick's using to stop all of those things happening uh, don't fare so well against Xerneas, especially when they're set up. But Torkoal is the only Pokemon that Dale has uh, with enough ammunition to really knock out the stack attacker quickly. So, you know, you've got all of these Pokemon are really important in the matchup and how these players are positioning it. 
and it's really now coming down to how the uh, how these players lead. I think you know maybe not bringing the Incineroar so much if you're Dale, or at least rely on it so so early in the game is maybe as effective because of that Indeedy and Sarina. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a rethink there to try and get some early board position and then uh, carry it through, get that Torkoal into a place where it can knock out the stack attacker. And once the stack attacker's done, gone, we saw how effective Dale's team uh, could be against the uh, rest of Patrick's team. Yeah, we are going into game here, game three here though. Dale trying to keep South Africa's hopes alive, sends out his Rillaboom and his Incineroar, instead facing it off against Patrick, Serena, and Tornadus. So no psychic terrain here, but still no fake out pressure because of that Serena and its Queenly Majesty. So there is opportunities for moves like Tailwind to get up here uh, and really increase that speed if Patrick is going for a faster mode if he swapped his game plan. Exactly, and one of the things that we saw from the previous game was that the Tornadus could take a few hits, and uh, that's kind of quite difficult for Dale to deal with now. Uh, Rillaboom definitely not going to be doing too much in that arena, uh, but the it, there could be an opportunity here for maybe Dale to uh, put some real damage onto uh, the Tornadus. A Sarina not so impactful overall, especially after that Intimidate drop from Incineroar. Um, and so it's kind of only there to stop the fake out at the moment and put a little bit of damage onto the field. <laughs> Tornadus though, going for the rain dance finally. Yeah, it does show Dale that it is carrying that rain dance, so it is a little bit more threatening. Drum beating from this Rillaboom though is gonna go into that Serena slot on Patrick's side. Does a little bit of damage, possibly fishing for a switch there, but is still able to drop the speed on that Serena. Incineroar goes for a throat chop here onto the Tornadus as well. But Serena goes for that triple axel, but it Ooh. misses on the very first turn of that triple axel, so not able to get that really critical damage off onto that Rillaboom. Yeah, one of, the, one of the great things about Serena uh, is that it gets access to so many good coverage moves. Uh, fortunately, all of those moves can miss. Yes. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's exactly what we see here. Um, Tornadus, though, taking a little bit of damage uh, could be accruing some uh, a bit of a nicer board position. I do like that drum beating into the Serena, though, uh, making sure that it was going to be then slower than the Incineroar. Uh, that gives uh, Dale a little bit of breathing room to make sure that Incineroar uh, gets off those attacks in the face of uh, some big attacks from uh, Sarina and from uh, Tornadus that could come out onto the Incineroar. Yeah, this Torko though, gonna take away that rain that that Tornadus just set up the last turn. Stack Attacka actually coming in here for Patrick in Serena's place, getting rid of that attack that attack drop from the Intimidate, but a Hurricane here in the sun does connect with this Torkoal, does get the confusion onto Dale's Torkoal, so a really huge play here. Flare Blitz from the Incineroar as well is gonna do a really chunky amount of damage, is enough to knock that Tornadus mm. out with that boost from the sun, so losing that Tornadus means there's not that extra way to set the rain up, and you've got some Pokemon that are much more comfortable in Trick Room with this Incineroar and this Torkoal. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm not sure I like this position for Dale, I mean, Bringing the Torkoal in there was, I think, maybe a little bit premature. Maybe Dale thought that uh, Patrick was going to bring in the rain that turn, uh, and not this turn. Uh, this turn being the more crucial one, being that now rain is on the field and Torkoal's on the field, which is definitely not a combination that you want if you're Dale. Uh, he's going to have to do some repositioning now because that Torkoal is absolutely essential uh, to his game plan. And Patrick's positioned himself really nicely and uh, just allowing that uh, Tornadus to go down was able to hit the Torkoal as well uh, it looks like it's on a little bit lower health than it was in the previous game so if that stack attacker gets into Trick Room um, if that's the position that we end up in later in the game uh, Dale's going to have to be really careful about dealing with Rock Slide and making sure some Intimidates go off onto that stack attacker and uh, that the Earth Power can go off but in the meantime, it looks like Water Spout is coming out onto the field and it's going to be doing big, big damage regardless of what comes in for Dale. Yeah, that Rillaboom though swaps in for the Torkoal, not wanting to lose that just yet. The Water Spout from this Kyogre is going to go into both of the Pokemon, is enough to knock that Incineroar out, which is absolutely massive because that gets rid of that extra threat, especially with those Throat Chops. We knew how much damage that was doing to the Indeedee. We can peek behind the screen and see that he didn't bring Indeedee this game. He is able to set that Trick Room up though, so you do have this faster Rillaboom, but then a Choice Scarf Kyogre now who is locked into Water Spout in Trick Room. 
Yeah, and I was just wondering while that turn was playing out, if a gyro ball was maybe a little bit more accurate for accurate for Patrick. Uh, we know that the Torkoal in some way, shape or form is going to be switching out. And uh, if you damage the Rillaboom, which is the only Pokemon that wants to take a hit, um, you may be able to just get into a position with the, with the health that the Torkoal's at now, uh, where you could just bring in the Sarina and Water Spout again, and uh, the, Tor the, the Rillaboom wouldn't be able to last the hit. Uh, we saw how offensive that stack attacker was earlier in the match, but... Either way, this is still a quite nice position. We can still have the Kyogre coming back for the Serena as Patrick has locked in here. Our Rock Slide is probably going to be enough to knock out the Torkoal here. But that oh. Torkoal avoids that Rock Slide, so that Torkoal is oh. going to hang on for one more turn here. Does just a pretty good chunk of damage to that Rillaboom. Torkoal gets that Earth Power off, which we saw exactly how much damage that did to the Stack Attacker. It is that one hit knockout. So losing that Stack Attacker when you've just set up Trick Room with two faster Pokemon in the back is rough, but the Rillaboom does flinch. So not getting any sort of extra damage from that Rillaboom onto the Serena slot. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit heartbreaking of your Patrick there, uh, playing the right moves uh, in the right order. And then just unfortunately that Earth Power coming out from uh, the, the Torkoal uh, that's avoided the Rock Slide is, is uh, really uh, probably a game-losing uh, condition. Uh, we've seen that Rillaboom has drum beating, um, so could be able to uh, put some big damage onto this Kyogre. But uh, depending on how Rillaboom and Serena are trained, Serena is a bit naturally slower and may be able to just get a triple axle off onto this Rillaboom and knock it out and give that Kyogre a chance to attack. Serena gets that triple axle first hit though. It does hit the second time. If it hits the third time, this will knock out, which yeah. it does. So that Rillaboom is off the field. It's nice having that Serena because you can't go for that grassy glide. There was an earth power into the Kyogre, but this Kyogre did lock itself into Scald, which is great because it's not worrying about dealing with something like those drops of HP, dealing with the water spout output damage there. So now that that Torkoal is off the field as well, it is in Trick Room. But this Xerneas is coming in, and this Serena will be faster than the Xerneas, which should be interesting to see exactly mm. what happens here. Yeah, a little bit of a, a break there from Dale after such a good turn, um, getting getting to that position. Now Patrick brings it back, and grassy terrain leaving the field is very good for uh, Dale here, just allowing the Xerneas to uh, take another hit. We've got a few more turns of Trick Room left, a couple there, as you've just seen on your screen. So it uh, could, could be a Protect this turn, or maybe a Geomancy next turn, or vice versa, uh, to get all of the damage potential up. And uh, certainly with the speed interactions here, uh, Grassy Glide not going to do too much damage, but the Geomancy is going to be very important for making sure that that Kyogre is doing as little as possible uh, to this Xerneas now that it's set up. Yeah, the Geomancy here, a very nice turn instead of going for that Protect because now you can Protect the next turn and stall out that Trick Room and you have that Geomancy up already. So that Geomancy, of course, going to boost the Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed. But the Scald here from the Kyogre, which it is Choice Scarfed into, still does a pretty Ooh. hefty chunk of damage. You're not going to be able to get off something like a uh, Grassy Glide right at the beginning of the turn with that Priority. Now that Grassy Terrain is off the field as well. Xerneas goes for that Protect. It is going to try and stall out some of these Trick Room turns here. A Grassy Glide will go into that, of course, not doing any damage. And this Scald from the Kyogre won't do any damage either. So now this uh, Xerneas, I think, has to get through these extra pit, this last bit, and Trick Room is now over, so we can go for something like a Dazzling Gleam and get a bunch of damage off. Yeah, but more likely, uh, probably a Moonblast and a Dazzling Gleam. Ah, uh, Dazzling Gleam, okay, so uh, <laughs> probably not going to be enough to pick up the Kyogre, and that's uh, a little bit of a misplay there. Uh, you've got to take two attacks, and Moonblast was the only way definitely to uh, only take one attack in this turn. Uh, so the Xerneas does take two attacks, does go down, uh, and unfortunately for South Africa, that is going to mean that Ireland are going to win the set or at least get the draw, uh, get enough points to move forward into the next stage of the tournament. And unfortunately, uh, South Africa has met the end of their tournament life. Yeah, that is a rough break for uh, for South Africa, especially when so many things in that last game went right. You know, when you mm. had that rock slide miss and you were really... 
you know, you were working with that luck that you had, just the way that Pokemon is sometimes, especially after having some rough break in game two with that uh, crit onto that Torkoal. But getting, you know, it's tough because like you said, you know, if you can only handle attacks from one of those two Pokemon, if you go for that double target attack, it's not going to do as much as a single target. So that Moonblast, if it was able to knock out that Kyogre, then that Kyogre wouldn't get that massive amount of Scald damage. And then you'd only be taking a small amount from the Serena. For yeah, some, you know, and then you can go the next turn. Exactly, and that Serena was going for the Grassy Glide, and we saw the damage that it did there. We saw the damage that Scald did. Um, slightly better to attack into the Kyogre. Both Pokemon on uh, uh, Patrick's side of the field aren't likely to carry Protect, or certainly with the way that uh, the way that Patrick's had a Choice Scarf on it. Um, but the the fact is that Scald has a little bit of a chance to. I uh, get that burn as well and just in case maybe something didn't quite go the way that he did there was just it was just a little bit more accurate to knock out that Kyogre first rather than that Serena uh, depending on you know how the rolls play out and whether or not burn is enough to uh, knock it out after another scold but unfortunately dazzling gleam not enough to do the business on either pokemon so uh, unfortunate end there for dale but well played by both players i mean going to three games was great and uh, there was a lot of backwards and forwards and the way that both of the players positioned their weather was really interesting to see and certainly how Patrick moved into Trick Room uh, and it took that to his advantage and how Dale took advantage of that in the first game was really good to see. Yeah, and that Serena, like we said, that peak behind the screen that we do get was running a Salt Vest. So that Serena mm-hmm. probably would have lived at least one Moon Blast, but that Xerneas would have to live several Grassy Glides and so, you know, yeah. having those several glassy glads like that Xerneas could live. So that's just a tough way to look at those end games, especially when you know that, you know, you might have that double target move and it might be, you know, really exciting to click it when you only have two Pokemon left. But sometimes just knowing what the smarter end game is, you know, and that's something with Pokemon. That's just learning over time. You know, I still I think I still do the exact I would do the exact same thing. <laughs> I said Dazzling Gleam and it happened yeah. and I was like, oh, I was right. And then I was like, oh, no, I was right. <laughs> because then you think about yeah. exactly what happens. Yeah. So yeah. interesting to see, of course, really great for Patrick to put Ireland into the elimination rounds after this group stage. So a really nice job by Patrick keeping Ireland in this competition. Very great games by South Africa throughout the whole tournament. So it's mm. nice to see mm. South Africa in this tournament playing, you know, to the level that we know that they can play at. So and they brought exciting games every time. And we know it was fun to see. Uh, you know, it's great to still see Xerneas doing exactly what Xerneas does uh, from what it, from what it did a few years ago. So we'll be right back, guys. We have a couple more games today. Very exciting. Four more that are all, you know, down to the wire, dependent on how these teams are going to move forward. So we'll be taking a quick break, but we will be right back. 